Chapter 5 of Slave Planet by Lawrence M. Janifer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I don't mind parties, Norma. Not ordinary parties. But that one didn't look like an ordinary party. Norma stood her ground in front of her desk. This, after all, was important. But, Dr. Halingen, we... Don't try to persuade me the little old woman said sharply. Don't try to cozen me into something. I know all the tricks, Norma. I invented a good third of them, and it's been a long time since I had to use a textbook to remember the rest. I'm not trying to persuade you of anything. The woman wouldn't listen. That was the whole trouble. In the harsh, bright light of morning she sat like a stone statue, casting a shadow of black on the polished desk. This was Dr. Hanlingen. And how did you talk to Dr. Hanlingen? But it was important, Norma reminded herself again. It was perfectly possible that the entire group of people at the party would be downgraded, or at least get marked down on their records. But we weren't doing anything harmful. If you have a party, you've got to expect people to, oh, to get over-enthusiastic, maybe. But certainly there was nothing worth getting angry about. There was... I'm sure you've thought all this out, Dr. Henningen said tightly. You seem to have your case well prepared, and it would be a pleasure to listen to you. But, unfortunately, the woman continued in a voice like steel, I have a great deal of work to do this morning. Dr. Henningen! I'm sorry, she said, but she didn't sound sorry in the least. Her eyes went down to a pile of papers on the desk. A second passed. "'You've got to listen to me,' Norma said. "'What you're doing is unfair.' Dr. Hanlingen didn't look up. "'Oh?' "'They were just having fun,' Norma said. "'There was nothing wrong, nothing at all. You happened to come in at a bad moment. But it didn't mean anything. There wasn't anything going on that should have bothered you.' Perhaps not, Dr. Hanlingen said. Unfortunately, what bothers me is not reducible to rule. But you're going to act on it, Norma said. You're going to... Yes, Dr. Hanlingen said. What am I going to do? Well, you... Downgrade the persons who were there, Dr. Hanlingen asked. Enter remarks in the permanent records? Prevent promotion? Just what am I supposed to have in mind? Well, I thought... I... I plan, Dr. Hanlingen said, nothing whatever, not just at present. I want to think about what I saw, about the people I saw. At present, nothing more. There was a little silence. Norma felt herself relax. Then she asked, At present? Dr. Hanlingen looked up at her, the eyes ice cold and direct. What action I determined to take she said, will be my responsibility, mine alone. I do not intend to discuss it or to attempt to justify it to you or to anyone. Yes, Dr. Hanlingen, Norma said awkwardly. Thank you. Don't thank me yet, Dr. Hanlingen said. Go and do your own work. I've got quite a lot to oversee here. She went back to her papers. Norma turned, stopped, and then walked to the door. At the door she turned again, but Dr. Hanlingen was paying no visible attention to her. She opened the door, went out, and closed it behind her. In the corridor she took one deep breath and then another. The trouble was you couldn't depend on the woman to do anything. She meant exactly what she had said, for the present, and who could tell what might happen later. Norma headed for her own cubicle, where she ignored the papers and the telephone messages waiting for her, and reached for the intercom button instead. She pushed it twice, and a voice said, "'What happened?' "'It's not good, Greta,' Norma said. "'It's, well, undecided. Anyhow, we've got that much going for us.' "'Undecided?' the voice asked. "'She said she wouldn't do anything. Yet.' But she left it open. Oh, Lord! Oh, my! 
Norma nodded at the intercom speaker. That's right. Anything's possible. You know what she's like. Oh, Lord, do I. And, Greta, why did you have to be there right by the door with that strange type, as if it had been set up for her, right in front of her eyes? An accident, Greta said. A pure by God accident. When she walked in, when I saw her, believe me, Norma, my blood ran absolutely cold. Temperature of ice, or something colder than ice. Just that one look, just that one long look around, Norma said, and she was gone. As if she'd memorized us, every one of us, filed the whole thing away and didn't need to see any more. I would have explained, but there wasn't any time. I know, Norma said. Greta, who was he, anyhow? Him? Greta said. Who knows? A friend of Sender's. You know Sender, don't you? Albin Sender? That's the one. He... But he's not from Psyche, Norma said. Neither is his friend, I guess, Greta said. But they come over. You know that. Sender's always around. And you had to invite them. Invite? Greta said. I didn't invite anybody. They were there, that's all. Cinder always shows up, you know that. Great, Norma said. So last night he had to bring a friend, and the friend got grabby. No, Greta said. He was, well, confused maybe. Never been to a party of ours before, or anyhow not that I remember. I was trying to loosen him up. You loosened everybody up, Norma said. There was a silence. I am sorry, Norma said. All right, you couldn't have known. I didn't know anything, Greta's voice said. She was there, that's all. I wonder where the Dr. Hanlogen knew him, Norma said. The new one, I mean. His name was Johnny something, Greta said. We'll just have to wait and find out, Norma said. Whatever she's going to do, there isn't any way to stop it. I did the best I could. Sure you did, Greta said. We know that. Sure. Sender and his friends, Norma began. Oh, forget about that, Greta said. Who cares about them? End of chapter 5